Mark, it's great to have you um, continue on this discussion. I mean, my question to you is, why now? Why is Amazon doing this stock split now when there's been calls for them to do this and plenty of reason for them to do it in the past? Do, what does this say about Andy Jassy's leadership in Amazon at this moment? You know, Deirdre, I actually think the more interesting thing is the share buyback that they're actually putting capital to work to buy back stock. This is the first time in a decade that Amazon has bought back stock. They disclosed it a little bit in the 10K they put out. So they bought about a billion back mm -hmm. in January, early February. And what we just learned last night is that they bought a billion more. That's a that's chump change in terms of the total amount of cap, uh, cash, the capital the company has. But it's a signal. And what this company does, they have a process internally where they, they always have a price at which they're going to buy their stock if it gets below that price, where they where they view the stock as screamingly cheap. They didn't do it in the last decade. That says something about how they thought about their value. Uh, and that says something today about how they think about their value. I think the signal is strong. I think public investors are seeing that. And this is a year in which, you know, you talk about Apple trading up 50 percent post its stock split. I think actually this is exactly what's going to happen. With I think it's possible that this happens with Amazon. You've just finished your major investment cycle. You're going to have margins ramp mm -hmm. this year. Those advertising dollars, AWS dollars are coming in to ramp up margins too. I think this is a great opportunity to buy Amazon. Yeah. And you just got your signal last night. And those advertising dollars. Speaking of, Mark, they actually um, broke out that advertising segment for the first time last quarter. And it all feeds into our conversation earlier. Is Amazon becoming more shareholder friendly? What does that mean for the long term of a company, like I said, that has prided itself on this relentless focus on the customer? Well, I like what John Ford said earlier. You know, shareholder friendly companies are companies that have their stocks go up. That's how investors think about it. I think this is one of the best mix shift stories in tech. You know, it's fastest growing businesses are higher margins. Structurally, margins are going up. Even in a major investment cycle like they had the last two years, margins were 5%. If you had done that investment cycle five years ago, the margins would have been 2%. So this business is scaling through every one of these cycles, they're scaling to higher margins. And the most interesting data point to me that came out of all of that advertising disclosure. Get this, Amazon generates more ad revenue than YouTube, and it's growing faster than YouTube. It's kind of one of those data points that's in plain sight, but when you see that, you realize how big advertising is at Amazon, and they're just now starting to tap into display brand advertising with this NFL content they're going to have in the, in the fall. Like, all of the money so far, ad money so far, has been performance marketing, kind of Google-esque money. Now they're going after the brand dollar. So you could see these growth rates remain premium at, at, at Amazon for quite some time, and it's got wonderful implications for margins. Uh, hey, Mark. Uh, good morning. It's John. So tell me more about your thoughts about the possibility of a major investment cycle being over. It seems like with Amazon, th there's a new investment cycle, pretty major, that could always be right around the corner. And I wonder how you balance that possibility versus just the possibility that that lumpiness and unexpected costs related to COVID, related to labor, that that might be over and that might be why they feel uh, more comfortable setting aside this money and buying back stock. Well, I'll give you two points, John. One is I may be wrong. If I'm wrong that the investment cycle is over, it's going to be because they super accelerate their investments in grocery. You know, recently they shut down. They announced they were going to shut down their Amazon bookstores, their four star stores. But they are switching those dollars over to groceries. And it's possible that they're going to go through a major investment cycle there. I don't think they are, but that's possible. That could be where that could be where I'm wrong. But where I think I'm right is the last two years had a dramatic, dramatic, like two to four X increase in infrastructure, in distribution centers. And they've now said for the first time in three years that they've got excess capacity. I mean, that's the first time. I think you're going to see their, their CapEx slow down materially this year. I think the, the amount that they spend on building out those, uh, those nodes to do this same-day delivery, super same-day delivery, that's going to slow. That's, going to, that's, going to allow, that's what's going to allow the margins to, to ramp up. I had this exchange with the CFO in the last earnings call. That was my strong takeaway. Margins are going up this year.